in this Amish community in northern Indiana, it is for the most part a quiet countryside, peaceful countryside. However, starting at 3.30 in the morning and going until about 5 o'clock, these roads are alive with traffic, with cars, going around picking up Amish people and taking them to their workplace. This Amish community, when settled in the mid to late 1800s, was mostly a farming community. And I'm guessing it stayed that way until the 70s, 80s for the most part. And then some Amish started working in mobile home factories. And then now they work at the RV factories. The majority of Amish in this area, in the Elkhart, LaGrange County, Indiana area, work at the RV factory. Even the farmers who still own 100 acres, 80 acres, 120 acres, a lot of them still go work at the RV factories. This Amish community surrounds the towns of Shipshawana, LaGrange, Topeka, Middlebury, uh, Millersburg, Emma Honeyville, and it pushes past Walkettville, uh, Legonier, uh, down towards Syracuse, and Goshen, and is reaching up into Michigan, into towards Sturgis and White Pigeon. Elkhart County is known as the RV capital of the world. It is everything RV. If you own an RV, there is a very, very good chance that it came from Elkhart County or LaGrange County, Indiana. A lot of the suppliers and warehouses are set up around here. Um, like Lippard Components makes a lot of parts for the RV industry, including frames. And some of the most wider known RV manufacturers uh, in this Amish community, the good places to work at are like Forest River Plants, um, Grand Design Plants, there, Winnebago has a plant, um, Keystone used to be a big one. I think they, I think they still have a few good ones. Jayco was always a staple employer in the Amish community. They pay a little bit less, but have good benefits. Jayco was started by a Mennonite in the 60s. He started building pop-up camper trailers in his chicken house, which still stands on County Road 35 here in Middlebury. The Amish make great money working in these RV factories. They only have an eighth grade education. They are limited to what they can do as far as work. So typically it ends up being farming, construction, stuff like that. Don't let this fool you though. There are many, many Amish businessmen that are millionaires that uh, only have that eighth grade education. Listen kids, it's not about the education that makes you rich. It's the drive, the willingness to get things done not being lazy. If you want it, you can go get it. You just got to put a lot of work into it. These Amish are making 60 to $110 an hour, depending on which factory they work at. They work less than 35 hours a week and make 80, 100, $110,000 a year. This is not the leaders in these factories. Uh, the plant managers, the group leaders, they make more. This is just your average worker. That seems like way too much money for a regular laborer but uh, they earn it. They work hard and fast. If you're not Amish and you work here, uh, you can pick Amish people up. They pay about five bucks one way for a ride, so that way if you pick them up and take them home, that's 10 bucks a person a day, 50 bucks a week if you're working five days. Uh, it, some people drive minivans just so they can pick more people up on their way to work. Um, they're willing to pay it though. They, it, they don't want to drive a horse and buggy there to uh, park, have the horse stand there all day while they work. Some who live close enough will pedal. They will bike to work. So they typically get up around 3.30 in the morning. Uh, a non-Amish or an Amish kid who is in Rumspringa will come by and pick them up around 4, between 4 and 4.30, uh, and will take them to work where they will punch in at 5 o'clock and then it is go time and they will work until it's time to go home at 11.30ish with maybe a 10, 15 minute break. The way those production lines are just well-oiled, well-greased machines is amazing. I'm not joking when I say that you sometimes have to run to keep up. 
Everybody is going as fast as they can, and so do you. If you want to keep up, if you want to keep your job. You do a certain amount of trailers every day, so your work is repetitive. You do the same thing over and over and over. For example, me, I will go in, I hook up uh, stereo systems in the toy haulers that we build. It's about a 20, 25 minute job, I think. Once I did my 20, 25 minutes of running some wires and hooking up stereos, I start over in the next trailer. Same trailer, same model. You can get really good and fast at it. If you're a worker worth your salt, you will constantly be thinking of ways to save a second. To just shave a second off of your, of your routine. Um, any way you can save steps to get an edge on it, to get ahead so you're not behind. Um, it seems like you're always running behind. You're never, <laughs> it's just kind of the nature of it. They typically help each other out. Um, crews will help each other out. It is very, very fast paced. It is, I... I know I'm gonna get people. Oh, I worked hard and I did fast. This is this is a whole different world. I'm telling you. I've I've worked in RV factories outside of the state, and they are nothing like what the Amish are doing here in northern Indiana. Some might say, well, yeah, these RVs are built cheap and crappy. Unless you buy a higher end RV, they will put the cheapest parts in they can. And yes, it is built fast. It is construction, um, so mistakes will be made. But if I were to buy an RV, I would make sure I would buy an RV that was built by a factory who employed a lot of Amish people. Because I've worked in outside RV factories and the people who tend to work there are the ones who like drinking on the weekends. They have family problems. You know, it's, it's your, kind of your typical low-end employee. I hate classing people like that, but that's just kind of what it is. They're construction guys who have drug problems, who have... So a lot of these guys will call in any time that they ha can have an excuse to take a day off, which means that you now have to replace them or shift people around, and you're moving... Instead of people doing the same job and oh, year after year and getting really good at it, these people are being shifted around, and they're doing new jobs constantly. And every time you put new people on jobs the quality goes down, the production goes down. It's very, very evident. With the Amish workforce here in northern Indiana, that's all they have, really, unless they want to go farm or start a business. So, and, and they come in, they show up every day. They, they come in sick and work. They, you know, they, they refuse to take a day off unless they absolutely have to, and usually that's because of a funeral or a wedding. These people do the same job year after year after year and they, they're good at it. They, Although they will mistake, make mistakes, they still get good at it. Uh, if you want a higher quality RV, you're gonna have to pay the price. I mean, they're built cheap and fast because people don't, people want, it's competitive. They want cheaper, faster RVs. If you want a higher quality one, go buy an Airstream, go buy a high end, you'll get better quality. In 2020, there was a big RV boom. I don't know why. Evidently, everybody wanted to go camping. Everybody bought an RV. I noticed in Idaho, campgrounds were full all the time. Used to be we'd go camping, a few other people around. But yeah, after that year, they were full, and you could tell a lot of them were new. I noticed as a truck driver that the RV lots emptied out. The dealerships just em emptied out. And then this in January 22, as I was finishing up tr truck driving, I noticed as, you know, the last couple months that... The RV lots were getting full, and I figured that it would slow down, and it did. So now in August 2022, a lot of RV manufacturers are no longer working five days, but are only working three or four days a week and have, you know, a few weeks off for Thanksgiving and a few for Christmas. It's definitely come to a halt as far as the boom, which is kind of concerning for the Amish community here because with the money they were making, that also made the land skyrocket as far as retail. And some of these guys paid a pretty penny for five, 10 acres. This is my dog. Now that it slowed down, um, they might struggle making those payments. You know, there's five acres with a house and barn was selling for seven, $800,000 in some cases. It's crazy. <laughs> I can't fathom that type of mortgage on one income. It is my opinion that all this money that 
these guys are these Amish people are making in the RV factories is ruining the community. It's they're having they have a lot of money, and since they come home at noon, they had a lot of time left on their hands. Uh, it's just it no longer is that family working together on the farm, helping each other, depending on each other. It's, it's getting away from that because of all the money they're making and all the free time they have. It's, it's a go, go, go community. It is not laid back. Um, it's unfortunate. In my opinion, many Amish people have talked about this. They agree with me. Uh, they just don't know how, how to make it stop. You know, how do you, how do you put, you know, you can't, you as a family can change, but it won't change the community. So unless they all do it. That's a little bit unfortunate, but that's just kind of what money does, money and conveniences does to us as a people. The rest of the world has bit into that a long time ago. The Amish are just in this community anyway. Maybe not other ones so much, but are just kind of coming in along behind us and taking the ticket. This morning when I was, as I was gathering some of this footage, uh, I decided to swing by Rise and Roll to grab some rolls for my wife um, she loves rise and roll they happen to not be open but rise and roll donuts are considered amish crack called that by the amish themselves because they are really really good if you have ever been in this area and you have not gotten a donut from rise and roll you can get other pastries there but i'm talking specifically about these powdered covered donuts if you have not gotten one uh, and you've been in this area, I would consider that a sin. Although those are good, my preference is still the old school Essen Haas Long John. Uh, Essen Haas was started as a, started as a little truck stop cafe, small building, and has grown to a huge restaurant with a bakery, with a hotel, with gift shops. Um, but these Long Johns with the Bavarian cream in them, mm-mm-mm. They are, it's hard, you can't beat them. If you're in the area again, make sure you hit those two places, get loaded up on sweets. You won't regret it. You might regret it, but not while you're eating it. I am CJ, this is the Amish Potato. We will see you next time.